Hello, everyone. My name is Patty Miranda, and I'm the adult librarian at the Canoga Park Branch Library. Welcome to today's presentation called Your Savings. It is intended to help you with your money, savings goals, large purchases, and unexpected expenses. This program is brought to you by the Los Angeles Alliance for Economic Inclusion and the Los Angeles Public Library. It is part of an ongoing series on financial planning for October designed to help improve your current financial picture and as well as plan and prepare for the future. Today's presenter, Victor Jimenez from Alliance for Economic Inclusion will be helping us today. So if you have any questions throughout the program, we would like for you to make sure that you send us your questions and we will have a brief Q&A after the presentation. I will now pass the presentation on to our presenter, Victor Jimenez from Alliance for Economic Inclusion. Thank you. Yes, hello. Thank you, Patty. Yes, like Patty mentioned, my name is Victor Jimenez, a volunteer for the Alliance for Economic Inclusion. And today we will be discussing your savings. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, next slide, please. Just a quick disclaimer, this presentation represents the views of um, the speaker and it's not necessarily those of the agency that you know we're representing. So um, also this presentation cannot be reproduced or distributed by a third party or any other third party website without prior authorization. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, your savings, uh, money, money smart module. Okay, we'll be discussing today. Next slide. So what is savings? Um, so, you know, today we will, we will discuss what it means to save, um, the reason saving money is important, and the ways to find money to save, okay? Um, we hope that by the end of this session, you will be energized about saving money and will be more committed to actually saving. Um, next slide. Uh, so, Key takeaway. Um, so the key takeaway for this section will be um, to set aside money every time you get income. Regularly saving money, even if only means a small amount, you know, um, small amount can make a big difference over time, you know. So we hope to, to have you understand that, you know. Next slide. So defining savings, um, what does savings actually mean? Um, savings means a setting aside a portion of any money you earn or receive. This includes income, um, income, um, income gifts, um, tax refunds, you know. Um, it does not have to be a large portion. Regularly saving money, even in a small amount, can add up over time, okay? Next slide. So is spending money, is spending less, is spending less money the same as saving money? Um, well, only if um, you save what you didn't spend, okay? Um, some people are under that assumption that if um, they're able to spend less because they saved on a certain product they were planning on, buying and they got a discount that they're saving money but that's not really saving not unless you actually you know save what you were able you actually save the money that you were actually able to save on whatever product you were purchasing you know um so saving is setting aside the money today for the future to build savings spend less money and put um some or all uh, what you didn't spend into the savings, okay? Remember, um, saving is setting aside um, money for the future, okay? It's not, um, well, I saved it here, let me spend it on something else, you know? You gotta keep that in mind. Um, you know, like I said, a, a perfect example of that would be if you buy a coat marked down from $60 to $40, it may seem like you saved $20, but you aren't building your savings unless you put the $20 that you did not spend into your savings fund, okay? 
Next slide. So why save money? Um, you know, these are some of the um, some of the reasons why it is important to save money. You know, you may have a, a goal in mind, uh, something that you wanted to accomplish, you know, um, you know, build wealth. Obviously, you know, you want to make sure that you build a nice wealth, you know, um, that you're not living on paycheck to paycheck, you know, um, emergencies. You want to make sure that you're well prepared for any emergency situation that you may have, you know, um, Typically, my belief is that when you're well prepared, you know, for an emergency, you may not ever have to go through that emergency situation if you're well prepared, you know. Um, when you're not well prepared, usually that's when you encounter situations, uh, you know, more likely that you would have if you're well prepared. Time um, with less income or more expenses. Um, Peace of mind, you know, um, that's another reason why it's important to, to save, you know, um, having a good peace of mind, knowing that you have your cushion there of money that, you know, it's set aside for any need that you may have or any situation you may encounter. And a lot of people obviously, you know, give them a better sense of feeling knowing that they have a savings. So this is a, another big one um, or any other reason that you may have in mind, you know. Um, you could think of, um, you know, maybe you want to save for uh, a vacation that you have in mind that you want to take, you know, maybe a car that you've always wanted, you know. So there's many different reasons that obviously anyone can come up on why they would want to save money. Okay. Um, next slide. So um, here's some quick, um, quick tips for finding um, money to save, you know, um, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, saving money, a lot of people usually from when I talk to, you know, anyone and say, you know, um, finding ways to save everybody right away thinks like, you know, in some of the comments that I get is I don't make enough money to be able to save, you know, and, um, you know, one of my beliefs is obviously if, if you can save, while you don't think that you make enough, you know, why would you think that you would be able to save when you make much more, you know? Saving, it's, it's a habitual habit that you have to create no matter how much money you make, you know? Um, and there's different ways that you can start off, you know, because it's not about the amount that you save, it's about the, the habit that you create on saving. You know, you can start small. I always advise people start with a small amount, you know, even if it's pocket change that you have left over, you know, from everyday purchases that you've had. Try to set it aside. You know, um, it doesn't have to be a big amount. You know, once you start with a small amount and you see it being, being able to build up, then you create a habit. And then after that, you create goals. So, you know, um, the, the fact of you um, saving, it's creating some habitual um, habits that, you know, maybe you can avoid on a daily basis. You have to make certain sacrifices. And here are some examples that are shared, you know, um, with us, you know. Um, ATM savvy. Ask your financial institution what automated teller machine you can use without paying a fee if you were... Um, paying ATM fees in the past, put the amount of the fees you avoided into your savings, you know. Um, here's another quick tip, bank on it. Shop around and open a free to low cost checking account at financial institutions if you save money, okay. Um, brand bias, before you buy something, consider whether you are paying more money only to get the brand name, you know. It may be worth the extra cost, but sometimes a different brand or genetic item can be just as good or even better. If you spend less money, um, add it to your savings. So <clears throat> some of these quick tips that are um, mentioned here, like I said, you know, in order for you to start saving, um, you have to make certain sacrifices of reality, you know, and um, you have to look at the many different, 
either fees or spending habits that you have. Like some of the ones mentioned here, if you're a person that has a, an account and use your debit card to withdraw money, um, if you're paying fees, try to avoid, you know, obviously any fees that you're paying, you know, check with your bank if you have an account and if you're paying any monthly maintenance fee, try to see how can you avoid, you know, monthly maintenance fees. Um, when you're purchasing any items for yourself, you know, try to see if there's a cheaper version of that where you can save money, you know, um, not having to spend as much as, um, you would have to, if you can minimize, you know, the amount that you're going to spend for a jacket, you know, um, for a shirt, you know, um, do that, you know, um, you have to make certain sacrifices, you know, but whenever you're able to save, you know, either fees, either uh, money on, on shopping, you know, on certain things that, you know, you either got a discount, you either decided to get this, the cheaper version of um, that product, make sure that, you know, you, you put that money that you save in a savings account. Don't just have the idea where I was able to save here. So now I have more money to be able to spend on something else, you know, that I wanted, you know, have that mentality, you know, um, next slide. Um, so where, where to build your savings account, you know, um, we will discuss options um, for where you can build your um, savings. Okay. Um, next slide. So uh, where to put your savings? Many options. Um, each one has advantages and disadvantages. So there are several options for where you can put and build your savings. Um, for each saving options, there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, you know, next slide. So here are some of the places where you can, um, you know, save money. Okay. So obviously with, um, with establishing an account and these are the different options of accounts that are offered. Um, some of the different products, uh, money market deposit accounts. Okay. Um, certificate of deposit, um, CDs, U S savings bonds, retirement accounts, investments, um, such as stocks, corporate bonds, or mutual funds, you know? So eventually once you save, um, you know, you want to make sure that you establish it somewhere where obviously you can see it grow, where it's protected, where you're gaining some type of interest, um, where it's not just sitting there because obviously if you save money and you save it at home, you know, first of all, it's not protected, you know, it's not building any additional interest you know you're not gaining any additional interest you know so um these are some good options um of places where you can store whatever savings you know you're able to save you know um next slide so uh another important thing to consider is um there are several benefits in keeping your savings in a financial institution and um one of them is um FDIC, which is, um, you know, deposit insurance. Okay. Deposits, um, in a federal insured financial institution are insured up to at least 250,000. Okay. So, um, a lot of banks either have FDIC, okay. Or NCUA, which once again are deposit insurances. So, um, you know, your funds are insured up to $250,000 just in case anything was to happen with the uh, institution of them going down. So um, that's another major plus in knowing that, you know, your, your, your money is stored there and it's safe, it's insured, you know, because once again, if you save money and you keep it at home, you know, um, there are multiple things that can happen where you could end up losing, you know, um, the money you save, whether someone breaks into your home and steals it, whether, you know, um, the, the house catches on fire and, you know, it's destroyed. So, you know, always, um, you know, knowing that, you know, your money is insured, you work hard for it. You want to make sure it's properly insured and it's going to be there for the goal that you have in mind. So it, it's, it's always a plus knowing that. So keep that in mind. Next slide. 
So another reason why, you know, it, it's a good idea to establish an account, you know, um, at a bank, it's the interest, the interest that it's um, compounded and that you in. So interest is um, money financial institutions pay you for keeping the money deposited with them. Okay. Um, compounding and um, earning interest on interest. Okay. So obviously when you establish an account, whether it's a money market account, savings account, CD, you know, um, whatever funds you keep on there, you will be getting and making interest on it. And, you know, as we know, different banks, you know, may offer different interests, promotional rates that they may have. So um, your money is not just sitting there, not making any additional um, income for you, you know, um, considering this, it's uh, it's always a plus, you know, and compounding, it's obviously any interest that you earn off of the interest that you already made continues to make more money for you. So that's always a good thought in mind to have and to know that you just don't want to have your money just laying around sitting there, um, not making any additional money for your for yourself. Next slide. So let's um, cover a little bit more of, um, you know, here's another term related to saving money. Okay. So annual percentage yield. Okay. So when you, when you, um, you know, hear the term, obviously interest rate, you're typically also going to have this to come along with it, which is the APY, um, reflects the amount of interest on a yearly basis. Okay. Uh, it may be a little slightly different from the interest rate that is quoted to you, you know, it includes the effects of compounding. Um, the more often your money compounds, um, you know, typically the higher the APY, the more interest you earn, you know. Compare APYs, not interest rate, okay? So keep that in mind when you're rate shopping and you want to, you know, compare rates um, to pay attention to the APY, you know, making sure um, that that's what you're going to compare you know, um, and make your decision on whether you were to go with one bank or the other. Okay. Next slide. Um, the rule of 72. So um, this is a, a formula that estimates how long it would take for money to double in value. Okay. Um, you divide 72 by the interest rate. Result um, is the estimated number of years to double your money, assuming no changes in the interest rate, uh, no deposits or withdrawals are made. Okay. Um, and we can discuss this a little bit more on the next slide. Give us a, a, an example of it, you know. So I, I don't know how many of you have heard the rule of 72, but, you know, this is something that a lot of people utilize, obviously, to determine. How long is it going to take for my money to double, you know? So when you're out there considering of um, establishing an account, um, investing money, you want to make sure and you know, okay, how much interest rate enough am I going to be accumulating or earning on my funds, you know? So an example, number one would be um, here, they give you it's $50 in a savings account with an interest, with 2% interest rate. So what you would do is divide 72 divided by two equals 36. So it would take about 36 years for the $50 to double to $100. Okay. Following example, next example is what interest rate will double your money in 10 years. Okay. So you would do 72 divided by 10. Okay. Um, so you would need to earn, that would give you point. 0.072, which, you know, in, in um, percentage amount, it will be 7.2. So you would need um, to be earning an interest rate of 7.2 to make sure you double your money in 10 years. Okay. So um, this is something to consider, you know, because obviously, like I said, you just don't want to just um, save money and not have it work for you additionally. If you can save money and then have it well invested or earn interest, it's always a plus. And you want to consider, obviously, the best interest rate that is being offered for you out there. You know, you just don't want to go with the uh, interest rate that your local bank is offering you just because the bank is around the corner. Okay. 
you want to you want to do some homework and you want to look to see who out there is giving you you know the better rate okay with also having you know in mind you know that it, you know it's properly insured like we discussed earlier that you know there's um insurance that would guarantee that your funds will be there you know so you want to take that into consideration but you want to make sure that you know you're getting the better rate because obviously the higher the rate you're getting then the quicker you will you would be away from being able to double your money okay next slide okay so saving for unexpected expenses um yes we will discuss saving money for unexpected expenses how to plan for an emergency savings fund and setting aside income for times when your income or expenses may vary okay next slide so why save for unexpected expenses um because life happens okay because unexpected things occur you know um to all of us you know so um people can find themselves in desperate in, in desperate for money when they need to replace a car tire water heater um travel to a, a family member's funeral or pay for um, emergency dental work you know and emergency um saving funds can help you this is money special, specifically set aside to cover unexpected expenses um, setting money aside means separating it from where you can keep money that you plan to spend or share with others. In the short term, it could be a in a federally insured savings account or perhaps somewhere else where it's safe, you know. So um, keeping that in mind, you know, um, it, you know, we we all know that, you know, it's unfore unforetold, you know, how many situations, you know, we we could have. You know, we either have had in our past or we either are going to have in the future where we're going to need funds, you know. So I, I think this is one of the, the biggest um, reasons why it is important to save because, you know, life does happen and you just never know what situation you're going to be in. And like most of us will probably know, you know, when you're in dire need of funds, it's when it's harder for you to get them, you know. So you always want to make sure you prepare and have your savings when everything is going well, you know, and setting that money aside so that when you have a situation that you were not expecting to have, you know, because we cannot plan out for unexpected, you know, occurrences of things that can happen to us, you know. Um, so we want to make sure that we're well prepared for those instances. Next slide. Okay, so emergency saving funds gold. So if um, you pay for unexpected expenses with money you have saved, you avoid creating debt, okay? Um, you know, obviously, like I said, we, we all have gone through instances like that where, you know, we've um, had a situation where we didn't have a savings, you know? And what do we do? You know, we incur debt because either we borrow it from a family member, a friend, you know, pull money from a credit card, you know, so um, it's going to create debt on us and, and it's going to create more pressure because obviously we have to pay that money back, you know, um, it's not going to go away, you know, um, so we have to make sure that, you know, we have that in mind, you know, um, you know, it um, takes time and commitment, you know, obviously it's a cycle, um, but it's still worth doing. You know, important steps to improve financial health and stability, you know. Um, next slide. Okay, well, anticipating changes to income and expenses. Um, your income and expenses can change, you know. Um, we want to make sure that we consider that as well. You know, it's not just unexpected things that can happen in our lives where, you know, we weren't in thinking of um, an unexpected expense. Um, also, your income can change at any point, you know, obviously you could end up losing your job, you know, um, the company that you were working for, you know, may not be doing as well and you may not be getting that additional overtime that you were used to getting and making so much. So your income can be affected as well, you know, regarding to the situations that may be going on in this world. And obviously recently we've had, you know, um, one of the, the most 
biggest, you know, situations, you know, which is the pandemic, you know, that pretty much affected a lot of people's um, incoming income that, you know, was probably something that no one could foresee that was going to happen. You know, I don't know how many of us can, can say that we foresaw that this was coming our way, you know, and obviously for people that were well prepared and had their savings account, you know, if they were some of the ones that were included in the ones that end up losing their job and not having, you know, their their normal income coming in, they were able to, you know, use their savings account. But contrary to that, we also have people that were probably not well prepared, okay, who lost their jobs, who found it, you know, found themselves in a really difficult situation, in a really difficult um, predicament of not having the ability to have income come in, you know? So, um, you know, your income can also be affected. And that's another reason why, you know, our jobs are never guaranteed to always be there, you know? Um, sure enough, you can always find another job, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna be the same, the same um, type of pay, the same type of hours, or the same expense that you're gonna incur because sometimes switching from one job to the other, depending on how much the commute, you know, there might be, it might mean more expenses, you know. So another thing, you may have bills that arrive only once or a few times um, per year, you know. So you also got to be well prepared for that, you know. Um, a lot of us, uh, including myself, obviously, we pay for car insurance. You know, I have it set up where it's a yearly, um, a yearly bill that I get, you know. So I have to make sure that I save my money throughout the year, you know, to make sure that I have the full amount that I have to pay on a yearly basis, you know. Um, you know, I, I do it that way because, like I, I mentioned before, you know, um, being able to save, it's, it's, a, it's a habit that you have to create. It's a habit that you have to create, you know. It doesn't matter what amount you make, it, you know. If, if you can make, you know, $50,000 and still be able to save if you create a habit, if you make certain sacrifices, if you, you know, button yourself, um, just as much as if you would make $100,000, you know. So, um, you know, I, I choose to do that because, like I said, it creates a good habit where, you know, eventually I save the money and once I get the bill, I make sure I, I, I pay it off, you know. Um, third thing here, your spending can increase temporarily, you know. So, yeah, you know, sometimes we may have, you know, um, times, you know, where, like I mentioned before, we may have additional hours being offered to us as overtime. So we're having extra income come in. Okay. Um, you know, and we anticipate or, or think that that's always going to be the case. So we create spending habits around that extra income that we had. And all of a sudden, you know, like I said, things change and you're not getting, you know, that extra, you know, those extra hours, you know, or if you had an extra job, a part-time job, you know, it's not there anymore, you know? So, you know, that extra income that you were anticipating, you know, it's not there. It was, it was a temporary facet of our lives and we have to make sure that we take account for that as well. Next slide. Okay, so remembering the, the key takeaway here, you know, an emergency savings, fund is part of the foundation of financial health, okay? So setting aside $500 to $1,000 can cover many unexpected expenses, you know? So um, I, I know, I think, um, you know, we're all well aware maybe that, you know, the, the cost of living has increased, you know? Um, it, it's a lot more expensive now than it used to be maybe even five years ago, you know? Um, but a lot of people think that obviously, look, there is a set amount that sometimes people have in mind of how much they want to have in their savings, but it doesn't have to be that big of an amount. Sometimes, like mentioned here, five hundred to a thousand dollars obviously can be a good help, you know. Um, so when people think of savings, they they want to program in their mind a set amount that they want to get to, and they just see it so far away, you know. It doesn't have to be that much. You can start off start off with a small goal. If you have trouble saving or budgeting yourself, start off the goal to be just as low as $100. You know, like, okay, can I try to save $100 in the next three months? You know, can I do that? You know, um, 
as you accomplish that goal, then you start increasing it and say, okay, well, instead of $100, let me set a goal for like now 500 if I was able to do, you know. So start with small amounts. Setting aside just a, a small amount, you know, will definitely be helpful, you know, if you encounter a time of um, financial need, you know. Um, 500 to $1,000 can go a long way when you're in financial need. I know when you're not in financial need, it just doesn't seem like it's not much, like it's not going to be much help. But um, trust me, when you're in need, you know, and there is no, you know, um, income coming in at all, 500 or $1,000 would seem like a lot. So, you know, keep that in mind. Next slide. Saving for your goals. So we all have some goals in mind, you know, and each one of our goals is, is different, you know. Um, so you want to set um, set some goals of why you want to accomplish what what you want to accomplish, you know, it's because it's easier for you to maybe, you know, um, start the habit of saving if there is a goal in mind that you have, you know, that you want to get to. OK, whether it's to buy a car, to buy a house, um, for an emergency situation, for a family vacation, you know. Um, next slide. So your hopes and dreams. Um, what do you hope for? Or what do you want in life for yourself? Okay. Um, think about that, you know. that That's how you, you'll come around, you know, deciding what goals do you want to have in mind, you know. Um, what about your family? You know, first of all is what do you want? You know, what, you know, and secondly is what about your family? What do they want? You know, and obviously as we see this um, picture here, there's many different things that you can have. It's either for an education, like I said, a vacation, marriage, um, investing, um, you know, buying a home, buying a car, you know, um, you know, an engagement ring, you know, just there's many different um, goals. You know, I, I, I occasionally have told people that said, you know, I really struggle to save and I can't, you know, find it in me to be able to save, you know, at all. And I say, you know what, start with a small goal, you know, even if it's like a pair of shoes that you wanted to buy. And if those pair of shoes are worth $100, you know, make that be your goal, you know. Make that be your goal to be able to accomplish it. But I know some people don't like to set a, set um, goals like that because they just think, well, a pair of shoes should not be a goal of mine. It should be just something that I that I can buy, you know, that I should be able to afford, you know. But, um, you know, you can start off with that. Instead of you just buying those shoes and putting it on the credit card, you know, um, why don't you make it a goal to say, well, you know, I'm going to make it a goal to just, like, buy – those shoes with cash, you know, I don't want to get in debt, you know, so you start off with something small. And then if, if, if you're able to accomplish it, then maybe you want to set a, a, another goal and maybe say, I want to take a small trip and the expense of it will be like $500. And I want to make sure that I don't put anything on my credit cards, you know, so I'm going to save the money to make sure that I accomplish that. You save the $500 to do that. You start incrementing the goals, you know, so Keep, keep that in mind. You know, it's, it's, it's a good way to to obviously because you have a goal in mind. So there's a better um, better sense that you're going to keep up with uh, with being able to put money away and save if there is a goal at the end of it. You know, next slide. More likely to achieve your goals. OK, these are maybe some some examples of what you can do. OK, um, write them down. You know, write whatever goals you have in mind, you know. Um, you know, I, I'm a person that I, I am a big believer on goals. You know, I, I set goals for myself. And th these are some samples that are given here that work out great, I'll tell you. Um, write down the goals. Post them. Post them on, on sticky notes, you know. Like I said, if it's a, a trip, you know, that you want to take, and you know, and like I said, you don't want to take the trip by um, putting the expenses on your credit card, you want to instead save and make sure that, you know, you're going to take this trip without getting yourself in debt and you save for it, you know, put down, put down, you know, that gold on a sticky, put it, you know, 
in places where you can see it every day so that you can continue to stay motivated and saving. You know, if you want to put it in your car, put a sticky in your car, put a sticky on the refrigerator, you know, next to your bed when you wake up. Anywhere where it's a constant reminder for you every day that there is a golden mind that you're working for, you know, share it with someone, you know, sharing it with someone else, you know, because maybe that'll help you because that person will be a constant reminder, you know, reminding you, hey, are you committed to your goal? Are you still saving for your goal? Are you still going to make that happen? You know, whether it's uh, maybe a car that you had in mind that you wanted to buy and they're continuously telling you so. All of these things will maintain great focus, you know, in you not losing sight of your objective of what the goal is. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So remembering the key takeaways. So create a plan to save money for your goals. Okay. So you want to make sure that obviously you, you do have a plan in mind, you know. Um, next slide. um match a savings account so um encourage saving money for a specific purpose okay um usually run by local community-based organizations um saving match by organizations running programs individual development accounts um and children's savings accounts so you know these are some um recommendations that you know um that you can have in mind you know um, when you're saving and a lot of people sometimes may not know, you know, um, first thing you want to do is, is try to look to see what your options are, because there's um, a lot of options out there that people may not be so well aware of what's out there. Like, you know, if, if, if you're not saving towards your retirement, if your employer is offering, you know, retirement accounts where you can save and they match, you know, they have a matching program with, you know, if, if you contribute something to your 401k and they match a certain amount, you know, you want to make sure you take advantage of that because, you know, in, in essence, a lot of people look at it like that's free money that they're giving away, you know. Um, so you want to make sure you take advantage of those things, you know. You want to make sure you do some research and see, you know, what options are out there for you, you know, but you first want to start off with your employer and seeing what ways what type of accounts do they offer that it can help you, you know, um, save money either by um, avoiding maybe, you know, um, paying so much taxes on income that you earn if there's accounts that you can, you know, set aside for. So keep that in mind, you know, um, do a little bit of research and, and find it out. There's, there's many different options out there, you know, um, like it mentions here, you can, you know, um, there's local community-based organizations that, you know, can um, also, you know, provide you with more information, you know. There's a lot of different options where, you know, if we would go through them, you know, it would be, you know, um, so much that we would have to cover. Next slide. Um, so these are some of the um, purposes, obviously, for making sure that you do that, you know. A uh, liable purpose may include job training, college education, small business um, startups, um, purchasing a home, um, may require financial education courses. So, um, you know, th these are obviously some of the, uh, the purposes, you know, um, that you would have in mind of the goals that, you know, you would want to accomplish, you know, um, if it's um, for a college education, you know, there's there's accounts out there that if you had kids, you know, if you want to save for their college education, if you had in mind that you want to start off a small business, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you do it the right way. You, um, you know, you're aware of the right steps to take, you know, um, purchasing a home. Um, so for all of these, there's um, a lot of information out there where a lot of people are not well aware. There's a, a lot of none profits out there where you can get a lot of good information, you know, and making sure that you follow the proper steps. Um, they're there to help and guide you through each process. You know, this would in, in time, you know, save you money, time and give you the, um, the peace of mind that you're making the right decisions, you know, instead of going at it without any information, you know, next slide. Okay, so 
um, you know, we, we finalized, you know, the, the presentation on your savings. And so, you know, just, just want to give it a final point to just say, you know, make sure that you create a good plan in, in savings. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it, it, it's something that, like, like I mentioned earlier, something that would give you a good peace of mind to know that you have savings that, you know, if there's a situation where you're going to come in need, you know, you, you have something to fall back on, you know, that you're not going to get in depth, that you're well prepared for any situation that may happen, you know, or, you know, even if it's something that you wanted for yourself, that you're not getting in depth, that if you're buying a car, you're not going to be in debt for so long, you know, um, make a plan for it, take action, make the sacrifice, you know, um, all of this is obviously, you know, it, it, it's a period of time that if you make the sacrifice, you will create a habit about savings, you know, um, once you create a habit, then it's hard for anyone to get you out of it because you created a good habit that is going to continue, you know, so you're not going to be, you know, um, well prepared for, for situations that may arise in the future. Okay. So have a good plan in mind, try to do as much, you know, um, homework as you can and, and looking for information, finding ways on how, can, you know, you can do it different ways, work for different people. And I want to, you know, this takes me um, to uh, talking to you guys about America Saves, um, which is, you know, um, being promoted here in the city of LA as America Saves, okay, LA Saves. So I just want to briefly talk about this campaign. So it's a campaign managed by a nonprofit Consumer Federation of America. So this um, program seeks to motivate and encourage and support low to moderate income households to save money, reduce debt, and build wealth. Okay. So um, next slide. So almost everyone can save. Okay. Just like we mentioned earlier, set a goal in mind. Okay. Make a plan and save automatically. Okay. Um, Pay yourself first, you know, paying yourself first is not paying yourself first so you can spend money, if not paying yourself first so you can save money, okay? Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, next slide. So LA Saves, we encourage um, you to start savings, you know, um, start small, think big, set a goal, make a plan, take action, okay? Take the Los Angeles, um, save pledge and start saving. Um, and the way you can do that is by going to lasaves.org. Okay, next slide. So like I said, you know, this is a program that was designated to, you know, um, any individual that, you know, seeks for additional assistance, motivation um, to be able to save, okay? So when you take the pledge, okay, and you go into the um, the website, okay, all this is gonna ask you for now. This is not a any any type of program where you're opening an account, okay. You're just taking the pledge. When you go in there and you signed up, you're just gonna put your name, set a goal in mind that you have of what you're what you're saving for, okay. Make a plan of how much money you're gonna save on a monthly basis, okay for how many months, okay? And then keep in touch, you know, put your email address, okay, phone number, um, zip code. Um, that's the only personal information that we require. It's not much information that it's required, okay? Um, and it's just to keep in touch and, and continue to motivate you to continue your savings. Like I said, this is not a, a program where it's designated for you to, you know, open an account here. The account you will open on yourself the savings, you would do it on your own, okay? By signing up, you know, it um, keeps in communication with you and motivating you on a monthly basis, reminding you, have you saved, you know, the amount that you promised to save, okay? Next slide. Along with pledging with this, it'll, um, it'll also um, occasionally send you information regarding some of the um, great either, um, events that are happening, you know, throughout the city, some great information. There's newsletters that are sent out and distributed that have great examples, great information,
great stories of people that were able to save and accomplish their goals, okay? So um, keep in mind, this is like an informative um, uh, like program where it provides a lot of good information, you know? Next slide. And um, that's about it. Um, you know, I, I, like I just to finalize, um, I, like I said, I highly, highly recommend for you to um, take the pledge, okay? Uh, once again, you know, lasaves.org, okay? Um, take the pledge there, you know, so that you could, you know, start, you know, um, your plan of action as soon as you can, okay? Um, you want to make sure that, you know, you are, you know, uh, well off to confront any situation that you may have in the future. And that finalizes um, the presentation for today. And I don't know if we have any questions. Thank you so much, Victor, for sharing such an informative and important presentation on savings. Actually, we do have some questions. Um, okay, here we go. So the first question, how can I select the best bank for me? Okay. And that's a good question. I know we discussed um, banks a little bit earlier in our presentation. And, uh, you know, usually it's a question that a lot of people have because uh, I do understand that there's a lot of thought in people out there that they don't trust banks, you know. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I highly recommend is, is um, visit, you know, the, the, your local bank that is, you know, don't just go with the bank that is maybe closest to you, you know do a little bit of homework, do a little bit of research. Um, you know, there's different banks out there. Obviously there's banks that are, you know, um, really big, they're small community banks, you know, so each bank functions a little bit different. And if you take the time to go and pay a visit and just, you know, you're going to be the customer, you can go in there and interview them, you know, ask them questions, have questions to see if they're the right fit for you, you know, um, Typically, you know, people, you know, bank with either one to two or three banks, you know, mm -hmm. um, one for maybe the convenience that, you know, the bank is closest to the house and it's everywhere. Another bank because of the customer service that they, um, you know, offer, you know, they just love the service that is provided to them, so, you know, and then some banks, I mean, some people bank with maybe the bank that they felt has the best product, the best interest rate, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it's basically, what are you looking for? You know, what, you know, are you looking for the best service because you're going to visit the branch routinely, you're going to be there and you want to make sure that they have great service. Well, take the time to visit, you know, so it, it's all depending on what is it that you're looking for, you know, but um, it's what will be the right fit for you, but make sure that you, Take the time to go and visit and have some questions jotted down where you can ask. Them. Okay, perfect. Uh, question number two. Let's see, what type of account is recommended to start my savings? Okay, so you know it's a, another good question, and I think um, you know you want to start off with um, a basic savings account. You know there are different type of accounts out there that are offered. We discussed earlier in the presentation. Um, what's, um, what's known as a money market account, you know, it's also a savings account, but it's probably a higher um, balance that is required for those type of accounts. You know, the more, the higher the balance you have on savings account, then obviously the better the rate is that you get, you know, but um, typically banks offer a regular savings account, which doesn't really incur um, a large monthly maintenance fee if you don't have the minimum balance required to keep it in there. So um, you want to make sure that you start off with a basic savings account and always make sure that you ask, you know, what's the minimum balance required for me to keep on here to avoid any monthly maintenance fee? Because when you start a savings, you don't want to start getting charged monthly maintenance fees and see your money go down instead of up. Yes. So you want to make sure that um, you start off with the with the cheapest um, account that does not require a uh, high, you know, minimum, a uh, high balance required. And typically it's a regular savings account that you would mm -hmm. want to start off. As you increase your balance on the account, you know, then you can ask for other options. Don't, don't just keep it in that regular savings account. Once you build your balance, then go 
and find out and get more information on any additional savings accounts that they may have that can pay you a higher interest. Mm -hmm. Good. Let's see. I believe, yes, we do have another question. How much money should I save for an emergency fund? Okay. Also a good question. And that's a question that a lot of people have in mind. You know, how much should I save? How much should I have? Mm -hmm. um, in my, and typically, you know, the answer that, um, that you get is you should have enough for six months expenses, okay. you know, six months expenses. So you would have to tally up, you know, whatever your, you know, expenses are on a monthly basis. Now, I'm just thinking of, um, you know, actual um, needs, not wants, okay. you know. <laughs> so, you know, things like obviously your your rent, you know, um, your food and gas and, and things that are like must that we must have, you know, tally up, you know, um, how much you pay on a monthly basis, obviously times six, and that's how you will get the amount because um, usually um, it, it is kind of well known that, you know, for a period of, it, 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 everybody, if, if you have something that happens throughout your life, it takes a good six months for you to get back to your feet, you know, to you, for you to get reestablished, you know, in your, in, in your comfort zone of how much you were making, you know, so, you know, it is always advised to have at least a minimum of six months expenses in your emergency. Perfect. All right. So I believe that's all the questions we have for today. But before we go, I would like to mention that today at 6 p.m., we will have a presentation on investments, breaking down the investment universe. And the series on financial planning will end Saturday, October 16th. So don't miss this opportunity for a free private telephone consultation with a certified financial planner on a variety of financial issues such as debt management, retirement planning, investment strategies, income taxes, insurance, estate planning, and many other, you know, things we can talk about, I guess, during the conversation. And uh, this program is presented by the Los Angeles Public Library and the Financial Planning Association of Los Angeles. Reminder that all programs will be streamed live on the library's Facebook and YouTube page. So we hope you continue to join us. Thank you so much, Victor. Thank you. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.